Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Huh. I completed a fitness course in a while, so second time to meet. Cool. And you get an achievement for completing it. So Welcome to Vines's, uh, <laughs> sorry, let me just start over. <laughs> Welcome to our food preservation workshop um, in collaboration with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Broome County and Vines, Volunteers of Proving Neighborhood Environments. Um, we are excited to welcome Ann Supa from Cornell nope. Cooperative Extension, who is a master canner. Nope, master preserver. A master preserver uh, and food safety specialist who's going to be leading us through some basics of canning and pickling today. Um, for those of us who are not familiar with Zoom, um, we do ask that you please mute yourself if you have a lot of traffic uh, in the background or a barky dog. Uh, the mute button is in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. There's also a stop video button uh, if you want to do something. It, you're absolutely welcome to cook along with us or just listen in. All are welcome. This is, I think, our fifth workshop this summer. All of our workshops are free and open to the public. Um, so you can register for our upcoming workshops at vinesgardens.org. Our workshop next week is a Kurdish cooking workshop. It is going to be in person at the Binghamton Urban Farm. Um, we have some participants from our English as Second Language class for New American Gardeners that we do in collaboration mm. with Johnson City BOCES. Um, Bahad is going to be leading us through making traditional Kurdish dolmas, which are stuffed grape leaves and stuffed peppers and eggplant. So if you would like to learn mm. more about a different culture and a different way to use different ingredients from your food share or your farm share, please join us. You can register at vinesgardens.org or call us at 607-323-3171. Um, if you have any questions during the workshop, we invite you to write them in the chat box. Uh, Jabril is gonna be monitoring comments on Facebook Chris will be monitoring uh, comments on Zoom. And, uh, you know, we're experimenting with some microphones and video cameras for this workshop. Um, so if you have problems hearing us or anything like that, please do let us know in the chat. There will be opportunities throughout the workshop to address your questions. All right, thank you so much. And you ready? Yeah. So thank you for that wonderful introduction. I'm Ann Supa. I work here at Cornell Cooperative Extension. Like she said, I am a master preserver. A lot of people say, well, grandma taught me how to can or grandma did this or my mom did that. I'm here to erase your memory bank, okay? Because we've learned so much. And if you've never canned before, you are right here at the right spot because you're gonna learn all the new techniques and you don't have to forget your bad habits. So that is the beauty of this class. So I tell people the easiest thing to preserve is pickles. Once you get pickles down and you can pickle dilly beans, you can do cauliflower, you can't use the same recipe, but you would have to find one, a different recipe. And we'll go into that a little bit later. So the first step in our recipe was to get some cucumbers. So I washed the cucumbers, I put them in the water and let them soak for 12 hours. I was here today, so I took out the water and then I added colder water and I put some ice cubes on it. So the reason we do that, because we want our dill pickles to be crunchy. We don't want that soggy, limp pickle we want a good crunch and i know they sell in the store something called pickle crisp or something i looked at that it was calcium chloride i'm like well why would i want to eat that so try my way it's and it saves you money too you know you just put some water and ice cubes so we already did that and then i will let you know what else you need to do before we even start putting them in Can there you show us the inside of the pot is that possible Oh, we don't need it's just an empty pot <laughs> and what's that that you had in there oh i'm gonna go over all that later because i'm on a roll here sorry christine i've got to go so she's asking me some good questions but we'll get there because i get out of flow and i'll forget things you need a hot water bath canner so a hot water bath canner is just simply 
a pot that has this metal rack and it doesn't have any dials or gauges or anything. So it's a hot water bath canner. If you didn't want to buy a hot water bath canner, they're usually around 20 to $25. If you can find them now. Now, Christina wanted to know what this was. This is a, just a stock pot. And I was able to purchase this insert because you have to make sure the glass jars do not sit on the bottom of the pot. So you would just insert it, put the water in, and then you could can this way. So that's something, I think I paid about $15 for the insert. They do have one that is a, um, like a nylon mesh, heavy plastic mesh that I've seen too, and they work really well too. So the next thing before we start getting pickles in the cans and cucumbers and all that, heat up your water. That is always the first step. Get the heat up on your water, wash your jars while you're waiting for it to heat up. And then like I've done, I've just set my empty jars in here to keep them warm. You always wanna have your jars warm because if you don't have them warm, say you have a, a countertop, a ceramic countertop, I've done this before, I can tell you all my mistakes. And I didn't think about it because I was tired, I was in a hurry. I set that cold jar on, then I poured on the warm liquid, it broke, it shattered. So you want to practice some safety things. So I always put it in, in my canner to warm up the jar. If you have a dishwasher, you could do it that way too. Or if you want, you can put it in the oven just to warm your jars. The most important thing, they don't have to be boiling hot. They just need to be warm, okay? So after that, we are going to make the brine, which is right over here. The brine is very important because it is the thing that's going to pickle your cucumbers. Can I turn this down? Yeah, we're, we're having some problems with Facebook. Oh, okay. Um, guys, ask the folks on the Zoom session, are you seeing all screens? Are you seeing Ann actually pickling right now? I, I for some think. reason, Bias Gardens is what's highlighted. Are you, um, so the Zoom people are seeing the workshop, but the Facebook people are just seeing this. It's black screen. Now I see me. So I'll wait. So while we're waiting to clear up the technical things, how about I give you a little background? Oh, we're working. Now we can see Ann again. Okay. So here's what I've done for the brine. Okay. This is actually a exact science. You do not want to make up your own brine. This is not your time to be creative. This is the time to follow the recipe. So in here, I had a half a cup of canning salt, which it needs to be canning salt. So it says it on the label. If you use iodized salt, your pickles will be cloudy and they won't have that nice flavor. So you want to make sure that you have canning salt. A quarter cup of sugar, uh, two quarts of water and some vinegar. I think it was one and a half quarts of vinegar. This way, and then you put it in your pickling spices. And I'm going to show you what the pickling spices look like. You find them in the store. You can buy them at Wegmans or Weiss, but you can also get them at Old Barn Hollow, Apple Hills, places like that. You can buy them in bulk and it's a lot cheaper, okay? So pickling spices, it has a nice aroma. And I put mine in cheesecloth. If you're not familiar with cheesecloth, let me know if you're not seeing what I'm showing you. This is cheesecloth. It's just a fine muslin type material. It's kind of loose. It lets the flavor out. It costs about $3.99 in the store. Guess what? You could use a coffee filter if you really wanted to and put your pickling spices in it and then tie it up. Oh no, I'm tangled up in the cord again. <laughs> so you can put your um, pickling spices in a coffee filter. So you don't have to go out and buy this. Unfortunately, I don't drink coffee, so I had to buy it. So there you have it. So this way you have that and you get that started and it has to boil and kind of simmer. 
How easy is it to reuse that teapot? I've never reused it because the the pickling spice kind of scents it and everything. And what if I'm making a jelly? Do I want it to taste like pickling? So this is how big the sheet is. So I can probably make probably around 12 little packets here. So for four bucks, it's well worth it. Like I said, coffee filters work great too. So I like to try to use things around the house. So, so we got our brine back there thing. You don't need two canners. I know I showed you, I have two canners. I only reason I have two for the ease of our video. Okay. So don't think you got to go out and buy two. So the next thing is we're going to talk about jars. Okay. Hopefully this year was a little easier to find jars. I don't know. I have a whole bunch. Try to buy ball or cur jars. They're a high quality jar. They don't break as often. And when you're checking your jar before you use it, check the bottom, to see if you see a crack. Cause this, when it actually cracks, usually the bottom of the jar falls off. So that's a good place to check. And then check and make sure there's no nicks in the top of the lid because you're not gonna get that seal. You don't get the seal, you're not gonna get the pickles. So this is what we call a narrow mouth jar. So, you know, it's hard for me. I would use this for making green, canning green beans, making applesauce, something like that. Then, I love using wide mouth jars. For the sake of this, when you're doing pickles, my hand can fit in it. It makes it much easier to pack the pickles in around it, okay? So I'm gonna let my jar sit here and I like to try to keep them warm, but it will be okay for right now. Next, buy, high, buy fresh cucumbers. If you're going through all this work, don't buy something that is not fresh because then you're gonna be very disappointed in the product and you put all this time and love into this and you're not gonna be happy with it. So, you know, spend a little extra money and buy some good quality. I like um, pickling cucumbers. They're usually about this long. They're, they're not in season right now. So that's why we're going with these ones for the ease of the class and stuff. So the reason we're doing it a little before so you can get the knowledge before the pickling cucumbers come on because it'd be kind of silly to do it afterwards. Look your cucumbers over, make sure that they're wa you wash them and everything. But when you bring them out, look them over, make sure there's not any soft spots or anything. And I do a little measuring thing. It's about six inches. And when you go in, you want your pickle to go below this rim on your jar. Because if you get it up here, it's going to prevent your jar from sealing. So that's why I call it about six inches. I always cut one, put it in there. Oh, yep, that looks good. And then I go onward and cut my cucumbers that way. Does anybody have any questions before we go on? Uh, not so far. Um, okay. Jim is saying that he, ha he has no problem finding jars, but he's having a hard time finding lids. Do you have any suggestions? Oh. That is a really hard one. Do you live in the Binghamton area? Um, because if you do, I will give you a hint. Usually Kavarix has been very good on, is that Clinton Street? Mm -hmm, off of Clinton. Off from Clinton, Kavarix Hardware. Um, Wegmans has had a good source of them. I was at um, Binghamton Agway and they did not have any today. Be careful buying them on the internet because sometimes they're not ball canning lids or they're a, I don't wanna say a lower quality, but they don't have the good rubber seal on them and different things. So, and they charge you a lot more. A box of lids should only cost you between three and 350. Some of the ones online are up towards five or $6. So does that help? Okay. Uh, also from Jim, uh, he asks, can you skip water if you pick cucumbers from the garden. Okay, so Jim was wondering if I could skip um, doing putting the ice water bath. You might not get a crisp pickle. So go ahead, pick it out from the garden, then put it right in the ice water bath and then continue on. 
because you want that crispness. If you like soggy pickles, go for it, you know? Everybody, and that's the beauty of it. If you don't mind it that way and your family's okay with it, because my family loves green beans. They only like them canned, they don't like them frozen. So I'm like, I'm not freezing any because why bother? So does that help you out, Jim? Okay, so we talked about our cucumbers. So make sure you buy good quality cucumbers. Okay. Uh, earlier, Andy mentioned um, you like to use uh, a smaller cucumber, which is not in season right now. Yep. Um, is that is there any difference in pickling the smaller cucumber, which I guess maybe you don't need to cut? Right. Is this one which you do? Pickling cucumbers are made so they make the perfect pickle. So these ones are probably not pickling cucumbers. They're just cucumbers that we would eat. They have a little tougher skin on them. So, but they will work. So you can use them, you know, pickling cucumbers are like the best when they're little, you put them in the jar, you can do them whole. So, okay. So now the recipe had, I didn't correct some things. This is one of my favorite things about re my recipe. It says, and it actually came from a university website. So I can't develop anything because you can only use a recipe that comes from a reliable source. So your great grandmother made this awesome pickle recipe. Eh, no, sorry, grandma, I love you, but we're not making it because she might not have had the right ratio of vinegar to water and stuff. And that's the, these recipes are tested and you wanna make sure that you do. So I always go to .edu sites or in a little bit, I do, did bring some books that just show you that are really good sources. So if you're starting out, this is what you wanna do. So I prepped my jar. The recipe says to put the pickles in first and then add the dill and the mustard. I like to do the dill and the mustard first because once you put it in the jar and then we're gonna put a teaspoon of mustard on top. Unfortunately, we just had dill weed, which will do it. But if you had those beautiful bouquets, you could use that. Okay. It's in there. We're going to pack the cucumbers in. It's going to hold down the dill. If you put the dill on top, like the recipe says, it could get caught in this lid and then you are not going to have a pickle. So you might as well make your life easier and just and that way you remember it too, okay? That's me, I'm all about remembering because when I can and stuff, it's usually after a hard day of work. So I'm gonna make some spears, okay? Because these are a little too big to make into whole cucumber, or whole pickles. And we're gonna see. I will show you my technique. I don't know if it's, it works for me to hold the glass jar at an angle. So you're putting them in, they slide in nice like that. If you're going like this, they're tipping all over. So you kind of hold it at an angle and you just keep filling your jar like that. Oops, I need a little bit more. So I'm gonna cut off this one. This one had a little bad spot on it. So I'm gonna put that over there. It can come become compost. In my house, it would become chicken feed because I have chickens. So make some nice spears. And while you're cutting, can you ask a few more questions? Sure, go we, for it. No, I can. We have two questions from Facebook. Okay. The first question is, can you reuse jars but not lids when canning? Yes, you can re reuse the jars. You can re reuse the rings, but you cannot reuse the lids. And I'll get the lid out here for you. I'll show you why you can't reuse the lid. I have this little, I wish I invented this. The you bought wand. The wand, I'm like, before, if you don't have a wand, I used to do it with a fork, okay? So it works. It has that rubber seal around it. That's only good for one use. So, sa yep. So save your jars, save your rings, and throw away this when you're done, okay? And I, I might as well tell you this while I'm thinking of it because you know what, I'll get sidetracked and I'll forget. So once you take them out of the jar, out of the canner and you set your jars down, you have to let them set for 24 hours. I'm jumping ahead a little, but 
after 24 hours, take off the ring because if you don't, there's water under there and it seizes up and you cannot get that off no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are nice little tips because it, they don't tell you that in the directions, you know? So I like to use a funnel to put my brine in. I gotta get my brine that's my lid. And when I can at home, people are gonna find it funny. I actually can on my front porch. I have a, get a propane grill and it has a burner on it and I will be out there. So it's nice and cool in my house, but not nice and cool outside. But there, that was a little too much, Ann. So what I'm gonna show you, sometimes I don't use my funnel. I'm better off without it, but some people really like it. So I'm gonna show you, it says a half inch headspace. They had those little fancy things that can measure your headspace. You can learn a trick. Where the, rib, the ribs on the side of the jar, where they come together, the bottom one tells you that's a half inch headspace. So you don't need to buy that little tool that to, oh, yep, that's a half an inch. Don't use your headspace on that. Yeah, I mean like really, why? So. Next step is, okay, I have a towel. You want to make sure when you're, before you put the lid on to go around the rim to get any sugar or vinegar or anything that would be on there, a little piece of dill or a mustard seed, anything that's left on the rim can interfere with it sealing properly. Then I'm going to take out my lid, put it on. Okay, are we ready? Any guys out there, you do not have to show your strength at this part. Okay, it says, when you put the ring on, finger tip tight. Do not crank it on there like you never want to be able to take it off. So I'm just gonna gently turn this down. That's fingertip tight. It's just, because if I really crank on it, it's not gonna let the, the vapor and cut with the, whatever, it, it doesn't make the vacuum. So it won't seal. And so you're putting it on super tight and there really is no reason to do it. We don't need to put our brute strength on. So here it is what it looks like. We're cheating here in the commercial kitchen. So we're gonna just set it in here. This pot should be hot and with boiling water. And then we're just going to, once it's boiling, you got this little rack and you're just gonna set it down in the boiling water. It will tell you exactly how long to do it. So in this recipe, it says 10 minutes for pint. So we know we have a pint, it's in there. I didn't turn on the water or the heat here because we wanna be able to hear. So you always have to use this rack. You can't not put, you can't put it in on the bottom. You're gonna break everything. Next one, the beauty of them having two or three things. So we're done, we've done the 10 minutes of canning. We bring up the rack. This part is important. This is called a lovely jar lifter. And I used to try to do it with tongs and it's well worth the 319. <laughs> so you go like this, you get it around and you make it level. You go all the way across and level because if you tip, you could make it so it's not gonna seal because you could get some water or something else underneath it. You're gonna bring it out, set it on a towel. I always put mine on a towel because you set it on this cold um, countertop, it's gonna break the jars. So when you bring it out, there's always some little water there. People wanna press down on it to get all the water off. Nope, you do this little trick and you let the water soak up. So, because you don't want to give a false seal, which is, there is such a thing as a false seal. I don't know whether, these ones have all sealed, so that means the indentation is down, so I can just go with my fingertip and I can feel that there's not anything bumped up. Where's the, I'll just take the one out that we were gonna pretend we're canning over here. This one probably will become chicken food. 
but you can see that it hasn't sealed. It's, it's got a ridge up in the middle. And once the vacuum seals, it pulls it down and forms a seal. Here, this one hasn't, but you, I could go, I'm not gonna use this one, so, so you can hear it. It's not sealed. So it's really important, but I could stand here and say, oh, yep, it's sealed, you know, and it will stay down on me. See, I haven't lost my touch. So my thing is I'm going to set this one off because I know that one's not going to make it. For okay. Us who are beginners. Yep. The way that you achieve the seal is by leaving that half inch of head space yep. and using only finger, uh, finger, uh, fingertip, fingertip pressure. Yep. To close that lid. Yep. Right? You don't have to do anything else. Okay. So it's pretty simple. If you have never canned or done any home preservation, pickles is the easiest thing to do. It's easier than jam. A lot of people say, "Oh, I'm going to make jam my first time." you'll be so disappointed because there's so many different things to remember with jam. But this is great. Hot water baths are great for making pickles and jam. So, but we're gonna expand because some people wanna know, well, what else can I do out there? We showed you the insert that you could get for to making your own canner. I have not used this. I'm my husband laughs at me because I will buy new things just to see how they work and everything. I have not had anything to make in it yet. This is it, and it's it's something that you can use. It's called a steam canner. So you put a little bit of water in here, you put the top on, there's a gauge up here, and it will work for your um, pickles and jams and stuff. The key is it doesn't heat up your house as much as this. So, and it uses less water. So, you know, it's just something else, that, a different thing. People always are inventing new things. I try to stay away from those. Ball. Sometimes they have the jam makers and stuff. Some of them are hit and miss, okay? So you don't, I always try to test out things because I do get a lot of phone calls or emails about this. And Chris is going to give me my email. So, because people can email me. I love answering questions. I try to answer questions within 24 to 36 hours. The key is it will come up on my um, email saying I'm out of town. So you probably won't find me then, but pressure canner. I, I can feel people kind of scared now because I say pressure canner and people think of things exploding. I don't know why. It, it looks like a regular hot water bath canner, except it doesn't have the rack. It has this little plate. I'm getting it out. This little plate that you put in the bottom to keep it off. The key is you make, this is if you want to use vegetables. So say you're canning vegetables. Vegetables can only be canned in a pressure canner. So you cannot use a hot water bath to make vegetables because of the acidity. You can freeze or you can use a, um, a pressure canner for vegetables. So I don't want anybody getting sick out there. So Does that include, uh, pickles? pickles are, they have acidity. So we're, we know what the brine is that we made. So he was asking pickles, do you have to put it in a pressure canner? Is that your question? Because you have to, that is allowed because it actually has a vinegar brine. So, and technically a cucumber is a fruit, not a vegetable, but we think of it as a vegetable more than a fruit, but it's nutritionally lines up with vegetables, botanically it lines up with fruit. That is the easiest way to explain it. We have a few more questions. Okay, um, and then I'll finish up about the pressure canner. Okay, uh, so, so Chris Kroliak on Zoom asks, are there any verified variations to the brine recipe with less salt if he were to make a batch for someone who can't have as much salt? That is a very good question. So you're looking for a recipe that is lower in salt. Yes, yes there are recipes out there that, you know, you could go to a .edu, if Christina would hand me that bag there, I forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot to take them out. Um, 
I recommend if you're going to be canning, these are my like little Bibles, I call them. I love the Blue Book of Guide to Preserving by Ball. And here is my Blue Book Ball candy one. I tell people to buy the newest edition because sometimes that's why I have them both. The recipe has changed because they've done some studies on it and they, so you want to try to get anything that's newer than what are we 2021 so say like before. After 2000 you know I would go more with 2010 so you can look here and you know I pick up these things all over and they do have recipes out there for people with lower salt. You could go, my go-to site on the internet is um, University of Georgia and you type in home preservation. They have recipes there and that's where we get all our information. Cornell does not do any home preservation thing because they found with land grants, they need to, not everybody needs to do the same thing. We share our information. So my daughter lives in Minnesota, the land grant university is University of Minnesota, and they also have a lot. University of Nebraska at Lincoln has a lot. So go to those .edu, those cooperative extension sites. They are going to give you, do not, do not, do not get any recipes off from Pinterest, no matter how delicious they sound. I, I like Pinterest for crafts but not for cooking. Because I actually saw where they were trying to can winter squash. And it's so dense, you cannot safely can winter squash. You can freeze it, you can't can it. And see, so there's a lot, of, that's why I say go to a .edu site. I'm not saying you have to go, you know, I'm not trying to, but I want you to be, have fun doing it, but not get sick, how's that? You know, so, and follow the recipe to the, this is not your time to be Billy, whatever his name is, you know, that comes on the cooking show and he's like, oh, let's just add a little of this and a little of that. People have studied it, you know. <laughs> we have a question about recipe sources off of Facebook. The question is, are canning recipes in the joy of cooking okay? It's a pretty well-respected cookbook. Yeah. How reliable are those? Let me see what mine is. And I do have another one. This one is canning essentials. And it tells you that probably would be Martha Stewart made one that was didn't have reliable information. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Martha, but you know, um, I think that probably would be a safer one to use. Mm -hmm. I like to go by the this one is really good. If you've never canned, it's step by step by step. This is canning essentials and it says, yes, you can. Mm. Yes, you can. I have a new shirt that I couldn't wear tonight, but it says I buy local because I can. Mm. And so it has canning jars on it. So these are, but you know what? Do, do a little bit of research, you know? Look at the recipe, compare them to something else and see if they're saying, not the recipe, but the directions. Say, see what the directions say. If the directions are pretty similar to other ones, then you're probably doing okay. One last question. Okay. From Jim on the phone. Uh, what, what level is the hot water bath on the jar? So you can hold up the jar and indicate maybe where the water in the hot water bath reaches. Oh, good question. Thank you, Jim. This is my bad. This is the jar that's doing all the demoing. The jar has to be covered by at least an inch of hot boiling water in order for it to can properly. Thank you. I, I apologize for that because I haven't can I canned all last summer, but I haven't taught. So an inch over the jar. Okay. And I'm so glad I have the test one here, you know. That is a good question. Test the water, so to speak. And I, yeah, and you probably noticed that that really wasn't really hot water. I just put my hand in it, okay? <laughs> so the other thing, that's finished. Can we go back to the pressure canner real quick? So there's two types of pressure canners. I have a dial pressure canner. So my recipe would say for green beans, 
If it's in a pint, bring it up to 15 pounds and hold it there for 20 minutes. So you bring it up to the 20 and hold it, or 15 and hold it there for 20 minutes. And it's, that's how you do it. So that's on a pressure canner. The only downfall with this canner is every year you should get this dial calibrated to make sure that it's reading correctly because you know, things hit. I dropped one once and then the pressure was like 10 all the time. Then there's an- Where do you get it calibrated? Where do you do such a thing? Um, you, oh, Cornell Cooperative Extension in Norwich will do theirs. And in the past, it was $5 to go and get it calibrated. To me, $5 is a lot better than having someone get sick with food poisoning. I, that's the way I look at it. If you don't wanna worry about the calibration, there is one that is called a weighted pressure canner. And it just has, it will say, oh, you have to can it at 10 pounds. You'd put 10 pounds of weight on there. I don't have one of those. And that way you could can that way. So if you don't wanna worry about the calibrating, I would go with a pressure canner that's a weighted one. I personally like this because I'm one of these people that have to visually see that number. So, you know, it's all my comfort level. And I'm pretty frequently going to Norwich to do other things, you know, so it works for me. I do have another pressure canner that's like this tall that I can can 18 jars at a time. So, yeah. So this one is my smaller one, so I brought in. And I haven't tried this one. You saw this one. Oh, the other thing we haven't talked about, freezing. You don't need a lot for freezing. I can tell you in a snap, you need two dish pans. Dish pans that say, I have dish pans in my house that says canning only or for freezing only. My children know better than to touch my pans. So you, you have to look at the recipe because you can go online to the University of Georgia, always tells you how to freeze things. And it will say blanch. So you will actually put it in boiling water, then bring it up, like, like corn is like nine minutes. Green beans is like a minute and a half. So you bring, put it in the boiling water, blanch it. So you've started the cooking process and then you're immediately going to put it into cold water to stop the cooking process. And then you can put it in Ziploc bags or I have a vacuum sealer, so you can do it that way too. So, you know, it all according to how you want to do it. The other way, which we don't have one here, I have one at home, you could also do drying. You can dry your vegetables, you can dry your green beans, you can dry different things. And I usually dry things because the downfall of a freezer, guess what? If the electricity goes out like it seems to every other day here in Broome County if it doesn't come back on, you're gonna lose everything. So there's good points and bad points. When I, free, when I dehydrate, it's in a bag and I don't have to worry about it. It's shelf stable, just like the jars. If the electricity goes off, nothing happens. But let's bring back to the jars. Where are we gonna store these? Hey, now everybody always thinks, well, I gotta do this and this. Storage is a key. Put it in a cool place in your house. I have shelves and I have everything. And then I put like a curtain in front of it to make it dark and cool. They, it doesn't want to be frozen, but you want to keep it as cool as possible. You know, like, like 50, 60, that's great. But the darkness, it doesn't decolorize your ingredients and different things like that. So that's where I would store my canned items. I have a freezer, you know, that I do. I usually have my meats in there because I raise my own chickens and different things. So that, that's that. So I have certain things that I like to do a certain way. And that's what works for me. What works for me may not work for you. You might like, oh, my family loves frozen green beans. I'd rather do that. My family would say, lady, I don't like these. Why are you making us eat these? So it's just, you know, follow, my important thing is to follow the directions. Just follow the directions. If you ever have questions, you can always email me at, are you ready? A-M-S, 
364 at cornell.edu. And -M -M? yep, like Anne Marie Supa. Okay. <laughs> and I'm the 364th person to have those initials at Cornell. I bet. Uh, so, do you have any experience with like Instapot? Like, there are some of these, like, they have like a tanning setting on them. What I have, thoughts on that? I don't know yet. I have to do more research. How's that? I have an Instapot. I have not used it yet. My son just got it for me for Mother's Day, you know, so I haven't, I haven't broke it out yet. I will try it and stuff and see. Sometimes there's just me that likes the old, true, tested way, you know, and that's part of me, who I am. And like I told you, I was, I tanned all my whole life. And then I went and became a master preserver. And it meant going to school for a week intense you had to take a test and score so high and then you had to teach classes for two years and have cornell university come down and audit you and make sure that you're doing it right i had to unlearn all my bad habits mm. because old days you used to flip your jars upside down to seal them we don't do that anymore or when I was a little girl, we used to make jam and we put a layer of wax on it. We don't do that anymore. So I, and I'm always learning. I'm always, I'm on the um, food preservation board and they will send me updates like, oh, well, we've learned da, 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 da. You should be telling people this. Why, why do you, uh, for people who have also maybe canned for a long time, how come you don't send them a second? You can't get a good seal. It won't seal. So you'll get half. So, and then that's when you get the water and the stuff underneath it. So, and yeah, the, and the, the wax one was mold. mold. Yeah, it would get enough air, and it only takes one bacteria to make your food bad. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we have a live question from Robin. Okay. Oh, no. And Anna literally just answered it. My grandma's 101 and she would wax her stuff. So I figure if she's got to 101, she's doing something okay. Mm. But um, is that the, the wax? In Australia, maybe it's different, but we certainly do get mold. We lose a lot of jam and things to mold. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I like to explain it to people like this. Yes, grandma lived to be 101. But how many times did grandma have to scrape the mold off and throw out the jam? And... How about if I blindfold you and tell you to walk across um, Upper Front Street when Broome Community College is letting out? You might make it to the other side and then I'm gonna tell you to go back and you might get hit. You know what? You were lucky. That's yeah, what I tell cool. people. <laughs> cool. good, to, good to know, I'll tell grandma. <laughs> I know, I had to break it to my mom that she wasn't doing it right either. And she was like, but this is the way I've always done it. You know, some people are really stuck in their tracks. I mean, it's nice to know that your grandma is so well preserved. Yeah. Grandma still lives in her own house. Mm. Oh, my grandmother lived to be 96 and lived in her own house. And she yeah. said she needed to have a shot of Irish whiskey every night before she yeah. went to bed. Yeah. I think grew she up on, realized that's the way she could drink, but. <laughs> grew up on a dairy farm in the country in Australia. They're the country folk, they're the hardy ones. Yes, I will agree. I grew up on a dairy farm, so I will agree. We are the hardy ones. <laughs> so did I answer everybody's questions about preserving? I just want to double check and see. Because that's really the nuts and bolts of what I do, <laughs> you know. It'd be different if you were here in person, you know, you get to put the hands in the jar, you know, you get to see it, but you've got the basic steps and the basic knowledge. Now it's just doing it. And you know what? It might not work the first time perfectly. And you just try, you call and ask questions, you know, do a little research. I will sit and read my canning books, you know, like you're at the doctor. Oh yeah, look. Because this one, I do really like this canning essential. It gives you pictures of all the equipment in it, you know, simple recipes. 
it says, how will I know if my food has spoiled? You know, it gives you, so this is like my little Bible kind of thing, you know, it's like, and it tells you where to store it, how to store it. I do, oh, I didn't bring that either. I do have a juicer where you put your apples in and it has steam and it has all these coils and you can make your own apple juice. I think, I'm thinking you might have another workshop in the fall. So I do, I, I'm, them yeah, I'm very passionate about teaching this, mm -hmm. so. So what, are there other workshops? I mean, Vines, of course, we're gonna have you know, our Kurdish cooking workshop next week, and then our season extension workshop on August 11th. What other learning opportunities are coming out of Cornell Cooperative Extension that our community might want to know about? Um, I will be offering a class for making your own salsa, mm. which is different. And I can't remember the date. you would have to, I think it's the first Wednesday of the month, but don't quote me. And it's learning how to make salsa. Because mm -hmm. a lot of- That will be? When, when, it, when I think oh. first, well, let me. I, I have my phone here. I could tell you probably. I have everything in my phone. It will be, yeah. Well, actually, a second. It's September 8th. We'll be doing canning class on making salsa and can, making sauce, mm -hmm. spaghetti sauce in different ways. Um, in the nutrition department, we do offer a variety of different um, nutrition classes that are free to the public. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that they can do, that they can take these classes and it's very beneficial for your whole family. So different things like that. I do serve safe. So I go out in the community and teach people um, a class called serve safe food handler. So they could go ahead and work like at Sodexo or in a convenience store. There is like a $15 charge for that class, but I do offer them throughout. I just finished one at Lee Barda, mm -hmm. which was perfect for that neighborhood, you know, to come. So you just have to go onto our website. We do have a Facebook page for nutrition. It's CCE Nutrition or CCE Broom Nutrition there. And we do do um, cooking classes every month with Channel News 34. We do make, and, and I will be doing blueberries. How to make a healthy blueberry muffin. Mm. So, you know, just using substitutions mm -hmm. and instead of sour cream, I'll use um, plain yogurt. Mm. You know, it says a cup of sugar. I'll use a half a cup of sugar because we really yeah. make those small changes end up being big changes in the long run, so. Beautiful, well, Anne, thank you so much. You're welcome. Very informative presentation. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to sample some of these pickles. Yeah, you're going home with these because oh. I I will take this, You, this one is not safe to eat, mm -hmm. so I'll take that one to the chickens. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we do have composting classes here at Broom at CCE Broom, that we have a person that does composting and does workshop. So like I said, I'm gonna take these home to the chickens, someone else might be composting them. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing we offer. Mm -hmm. This is named Josh Anthony? Yep. You can see how, how it he works out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can find it right here at CCE. There well, you go. The manager of the Vines Mather Street Community Garden, which does have an opening available if somebody wants a garden bed, Call 607 There you go. And then you can take all this information to process your food. <laughs> well, Anne, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you to our audience. Thank you, Chris, for being a great facilitator. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Happy canning. <laughs> thank you.